PR, in my view, uh, if you put an ad in the paper saying that you've got a great product and all these sorts of things and with endorsements, and, uh, people always have a bit of scepticism about it. Whereas if you get a journalist to write a story about your product and talk about it in that way, that's far more valuable. Generally it's thought that if you get some PR, which is a journalist with a news story talking about your product, your service, your brand, that's three to four times more um, valuable than the same amount of column centimetres, airtime or what have you. So PR, most people don't understand PR because you've got to separate PR from advertising. PR is not advertising. If you go and talk to a journalist and you're trying to get free advertising, they'll switch off and you go nowhere. Journalist is only interested in talking to you if you've got a story, a newsworthy story. So you need to uh, let go and not be worried about the outcomes. A lot of people say, oh, if I say the wrong thing, what's going to happen? In my view, uh, very rarely that um, you'll get that bad publicity, but even that you're going to increase brand awareness. So with your PR, you need to have a genuine story that is newsworthy. So, and it's easy to come up with things like that. So I'll give you an example we did at Brumby's where it, um, it went ballistic. So um, we decided to make the world's biggest lamington. Um, so we, we had a PR company we engaged, so we started making a lamington. So we need to put it together. So big deal, we're making the world's lamington. We may get a, a, little, a little bit here, a little bit there. So when did we make it? We thought we'll make it on Australia Day. Yep, that'll work. Where will we make it? We make it at Federation Square in Melbourne and on the same day. So it's Australia Day, everyone's got a holiday. Lamington's, you know, hey, it's lining up. We're starting to get it together. So on Australia Day, you had a one-day cricket match and you had Leighton Hewitt playing at the, at the tennis arena. Okay, so we're almost there. Now, at the same time as we're doing it, we decided, well, what are we going to do with the Lamington? We just give it out to people. No, we'll raise money for a charity. So we've got Care Australia involved. Um, the tsunami had just happened previously. So it was a gold coin donation. So we had all of the elements together. Um, we made the lamington, we cut it up, gold coin donation. So every news channel around Australia, um, all, what, what do you think the main story is gonna be? It's Australia Day, the biggest lamington down in Melbourne, money's been going to the tsunami because there were follow-up stories from the tsunami. So we're main, you, know, you need to align all these things. You can't always align everything in that way, but it was just an idea we had with um, the lamington. And if we would have executed it poorly, it would have flopped, but in this way. So we let every news story um, during the day when people were watching the tennis and the cricket on seven and nine, there was always you know, the news breaks, you know, what's coming up in the news tonight. Um, so it was always the world's biggest lamington. So, and uh, at the front of it, so they couldn't shoot that without, they didn't say Brumbies make the world's biggest lamington, but at the front of that, and all the people had Brumbies uniforms and all that. So if you're doing, often you see people uh, being interviewed on TV and talking, they've got a black t-shirt on, you know. Wear your brand, get your brand big, get a special PR shirt or photo opportunity shirt to, you know, those coaches that are sponsored by people with stuff on their collars, Follow that example. So um, that's just one idea of PR, but you know, uh, from my point of view, you need to get a good PR agency, meet them once a fortnight, work up stories from your stores. There's always something going on out at your store or your service oriented franchise. There's always something happening. Someone's won an award, it's a birthday, you've scooped the one millionth ice cream. Uh, you can make things up you know, uh, you know, to suit. And so you need to constantly have ideas coming out. And, you know, and so when journalists ring you, you need to speak to them just like you talk to anyone else. If they ring, I always return their call right away, be friendly, engage them, talk to them, understand what they're about, and you know, be user-friendly, be easy to operate, and um, you'll get lots of continuous um, opportunities where they'll phone you first rather than someone else when there's a story out there. If something controversial happens, um, there was another instance where something controversial happened, we put an ad out uh, which w went to a complaint to the Advertising Complaints Tribunal that, that, uh, that a nun thought it was inappropriate that we're using a nun dressed in um, traditional nun's costume. And her complaint was that nuns nowadays 
don't dress like that. They dress differently, and we were showing, we were stereotyping a nun, and so uh, she put an ad, she put um, a complaint in, and we had to defend it. So we put our defence out. Channel Nine, a current affair, called. They wanted to do a story about this, you know. So fine, we agreed right away. Dropped everything down to the store. They did all the interview. They interviewed all sorts of people about, you know. They did a vox pop in the main street of Brisbane. Asked them what they thought of the ad. Da da da. And did they find this offensive? It must have been a slow news day. The result was that we had three and a half minutes of uh, every current, and, uh, current affair program throughout the whole of Australia. When we measured the value of that, it was something like three and a half million dollars worth. And they kept playing our ad saying, what do you think of the ad? Is this, you know, whatever. And the result was, whereas some people uh, were a bit offended by it, you know, yes, they agreed with the nun, the nun was a lovely old lady, a lovely uh, person. She bought Brumby's bread. She was apologetic. It was just her crusade. Uh, we gave her uh, lots of uh, vouchers and apologised. And but we really it wasn't practical to reshoot the ad in the way. And um, I don't think Sister Act or all these sort of things would have worked as well if the nun hadn't wore the traditional costume. So even that, in a negative type of um, uh, area. Um, it's you can turn it. If you have a really negative um, thing that happens with your brand, uh, the best thing, my advice is don't give it oxygen. Get out there, make a statement, defend your brand, and then don't make a further story. Don't, don't keep on supplying or giving more opportunity, because the media will look for a story to grow and continue. So if you have a negative thing, go out there, defend it, say we've done this, admit your defeat or whatever you, that you've done, apologise, set things right. Um, you know, and especially these days with social media, if someone puts a, posts a negative um, item on your website, if you try and take it and close it down, it's going to make things worse. Don't do that. Let your people that are advocates for your brand, your word of mouth, they'll get on there and they'll defend your brand. You don't need to try and orchestrate it. If, if you try and do that, you'll be found out.